So good afternoon, everyone. We are in our last presentation for today's uh, sessions. And we're going to have Mr. John Weir with, as you all well know, Oklahoma State University. And he's going to be talking about prescribed fire and its effects, or fire in general, and its effects on fencing. So, John, the floor is yours. All right. We saved the uh, last for best, right? Or something like that. So we're going to talk a little bit about fencing. You know, there's always there's always all kinds of concerns whenever people want to implement fire and stuff about, about a lot of range improvements and stuff that are out on the landscape. You know, what's going to happen? You know, even on utility type stuff, electric poles, other things that are out there. And so again, there's always stuff to do that. One of the things is, you know, lacking with a lot of that has been was work on barbed wire fences and stuff. And we've done this this, this study and this work is was done back in the mid '90s. We've so it's been a long term, long time ago study, uh, or well, I guess early 2000s is when we did it, uh, on looking at that. And so uh, what we're going to be talking about is, first off, we kind of go through with wire. And so as you all know, or if you don't know, 12 and, and so we're going to be talking about 12 and a half gauge bob wire. So 12 and a half gauge bob wire is the standard type bob wire. That's not gaucho wire. You know, everybody understand what I'm talking about? Gaucho wire, that's, it's, it's 14 gauge got the big barbs and stuff on it. We didn't look at any of that stuff. We looked at real bob wire, 12 and a half gauge, two or four point wire. And all bob wire is manufactured to a industry standard set forth by the American Society of Testing Materials. So it's all standardized size. So it's all, so when you talk bob wire, it's all 12 and a half gauge bob wire. So this is whether it's red brand or other brands that are out there, it's all to that standard and specs. So that's what we see uh, within that. And so wire diameter, that's the wire without the zinc on it, is at 0 .099 inch diameter wire. Again, they twist it together. Barb gets on one of the strands, and then they twist the two barbs part wires together. Also, there is a minimum on the amount of zinc coating that goes on the wire. And, does that, so, and when we talk about zinc on the coating, everybody understand why the zinc is there? Zinc is a rust inhibitor, but do, does everybody understand how the zinc works? That zinc is bonding with the oxygen, because again, rust, rust is what is oxidation, so that's what's what rust causes rust is oxidation. So the oxygen atmosphere is attacking it, you know, either through water or through oxygen, and it's attacking it, and so it bonds to that. And so over time, what's happening is that, that zinc will not last forever. That zinc will last as long as it's there, and then it bonds, and it slowly, not really sloughs away, but it bonds with the oxygen, and it goes away. And that's why over time you see a rusted fence, you know, because the zinc goes away. It's not that the zinc wears off. But it, I guess it does wear off, but it's bonding and protecting it. How long that zinc coating lasts depends where you live at and the conditions around. There has been some long-term studies set up on the longevity of galvanized fencing, looking at post wire, all, hog wire, all kinds of stuff that you can look up uh, doing that. You know, they, they set stuff up by the sea, sea coast, which again, salt water, man, it don't last too long within that compared to desert dry areas, you know, all kinds of different stuff. But so that's the zinc coating and it's a, a minimum weight. And how you get the weight of the zinc coating is you, it gets dipped, you uh, strip the wire off. Uh, well, I'll, I'll get into that in a second, how we, how we did all that. Uh, the next thing is the breaking strength. So again, all that strength has a breaking strength. All the wire has set minimum standard of 950 pounds of force or 4,230 newtons of energy. So again, what they do is they put it in a, put it in a tensile strength tester, clamp it one side, one side, and they pull it apart. It's got a gauge, and it, at what point it breaks. That's, that's the strength of it on that. Also, all bob wire is run through a 2,500 degree lead bath. So it gets made, and then it gets dipped in this lead bath. That's what tempers it. That's what gives it tensile strength. So whenever we go to build fence and we start stretching fence, it doesn't pull apart, make a little bit, that wire gets littler and littler. It don't, it just, that's why it breaks where it does. It's like tempering a knife, so it'll hold an edge. So again, we temper that so it doesn't 
uh, do that. Goes through that lead bath. And then zinc supplied, melting point of zinc, 840 degrees. So that, again, that's where, melt, the, where zinc will melt at. And they coat it with that. And so what we, uh, we did was look at uh, different wires that we had. So we had, at that time, we had a, our study going on. We had uh, wire that was unburned. We had wire that we actually, from a large fencing project we had done at the research station, we still had original wire in the roll that had never been put out. And so we sampled that. We sampled areas that we had burned through one time, burned through two times, and we had also burned through six times. And these are prescribed fires in tall grass prairie, so we got fuel, you know, so, and on that. And all the fires were started on the outside of the fence, let run through the fence uh, in numerous times within that. And the first thing we did was, again, we went out, we sampled the fence, uh, we, we measured the height of the wire because we also thought there may be some kind of difference at the height because, again, the lower wires may survive a little better because there's more heat up at the top. So we measured, got, got an average height of all the wires. We cut a 24-inch section out of our fence, which that was always fun to cut your fence up and then have to repair it. But we did that, and then we took, sam we took half that sample to get sent for tensile strength testing. We sent it off to... Uh, a wire manufacturer in southern Oklahoma that graciously uh, agreed to test our uh, tensile strength stuff for us. And then we uh, left the other 12-inch sample of it to do our zinc testing to see how much zinc coating was left on it. But as you can see, again, the standard was 4230 new newtons of energy. Every one of the wires we tested were well above industry standards. So again, none of them had ever lost any. So the heat, any of the fire, anything that impacted the fire had never touched it. Even through six fires uh, on going that, no problem. And again, this is all fence that had galvanized wire on it. So it was newer fence. But this fence was put in in 1982. This study was done in 1997. So that fence was at 15 years old. Also, again, it already, some of it had already had six fires to it on doing that. <clears throat> the next thing we looked at uh, was the zinc coating. And if you follow along with this, this is the height off of the ground, 50 centimeters, 100, 150. And this is the amount of zinc coating. The dotted line is the industry standard for zinc coating. And so again, how you test for zinc coating is, is you take that sample of wire, no matter how long it is, you separate the two wires from it, pull the barbs off, and then you weigh the individual strands. Then you drop it in a hydrochloric acid bath. The hydrochloric acid reacts with the zinc, strips it all off, and you got a nice, pretty, clean wire. And then you weigh it, and then that tells you how much zinc coating was on there, so plus minus. You know, subtract from the Initial weight from the ending weight, that tells you how much you put it in the coefficient, it put, tells you how much zinc coating was on there. And again, as you can see, uh, these are no burns. You know, a lot of the stuff come up well below industry standards on that. All the, this is one time burned, six time burned, two times burned, Ever, all the wire, the zinc coating was not impacted. It's still, after 15 years, still well above industry standards on zinc coating. So again, showing that fire had no impact on the zinc coating. Some people will say, well, 840 degrees is what zinc melts at. Uh, well, you know, a lot of times our fires are hotter than that. They are. But the deal is, how long do they last? So again, think of this as that. How many of y'all have probably done this? You got a candle. Pass your hand over it. Pass your hand over it quickly. Don't burn you, does it? Keep doing that. What if I do this? Let it cook. It burns, don't it? I'm going to react. Same thing with the wire. Same thing with that coating. It's not going to impact it. And doing that. And so, again, that showed it. Uh, also, the other thing, sometimes with fences, what we'll see after a fire goes through, wildfire or prescribed fire, uh, is you'll look out there in that fence. It's, it's rusted. And you go, oh, it's runt. It's rusted. 
Well, actually, no, it's not. Because if you'll walk out there, you can rub that rust right off. And again, we, you know, we have these concerns. We talked to a metallurgist at a fence company. And he said, and what the deal is, he said, what that's called is a latent stain. Because the zinc that they put on the coating is not pure zinc. Pure zinc's expensive. The zinc they have has iron in it. And that's what you're seeing as the rust is the iron impurities in the zinc coating. And again, as you can see, after six burns, that zinc coating didn't go anywhere. And we saw rust, but you walk out and you wipe it right off, or over time it'll wash right off. And it's not has no impact on your fence whatsoever on doing that. And so that was one of the, the biggest things of doing that. And again, we looked at it. Actually, we sent it to a metallurgist. He did cross sections looking at the wire and stuff. And again, showing us that the, that that because some of the stuff that we saw was like, man, we just you know we can't believe we're you know we're we're seeing that on doing that. Uh, and again, our our premise was that fire really didn't have an impact on it. And again, that's what we see because we, again we burn through fences constantly where I'm at and doing that. And so with what that was what we see with how that works and on doing that. Uh, the next thing we did a couple years later, we said, well, what about old fences? Because again, you know, not everybody's got brand new fences or fences that still have zinc coating on them. What about fences where the zinc coating's been gone? You know, so older fences, fences that are probably 30 plus years old. Uh, so you have no zinc coating. Does fire, will fire impact the tensile strength? or what anything that's on it. So again, we did some looking and to trying to determine what we could test to see how we could make on older fences if fire had any impact on older fences. Uh, by doing that, again, tensile strength was the other thing that you had. So uh, we had some 20 plus, we knew it was at least minimum of 20 year old wire. We knew we had some that was over 30 years old, probably closer to 50. Uh, Again, we exposed it to several burns, unburned. Um, again, high fuel conditions, tall grass prairie. So again, it's gonna get as high, hot as you can with, with grassy fuels that are out there. And so again, what we did, we looked at tensile strength, you know, breaking, you know, break it apart. Then the next thing, the only thing you can do, cause you can't test for the zinc coating cause it's been long, it's gone, is you do a ductility test. And what a ductility test is, is where you take, the, a single strand, you separate the strands of wire, you wrap it around an eighth of an inch mandrel or an eighth of an inch bit, and you wrap it tight, and then you look and see if, it'll break, if it breaks or if there's any longitudinal cracks within that, that ductility. What that tells us is, is can we repair the fence back? You know, will it, will it wrap up? And again, a lot of times as fences get older, they lose that ductility that they can no matter what's happened to them and you can't fix them and doing that. And again, unused fence, uh, breaking strength, we got burned and unburned, no difference. 20 year old wire burned and unburned. 30 year wire had less, had less breaking strength just because it's old wire, but no difference between burned and unburned. And then we looked at, oh, elongation was the other one we looked at. That's where whenever they did the tensile strength, you measured the length of the piece of wire you put in there and then you pulled it apart, then you matched both ends back up and you measured it again to see how much stretch was left in that wire, if there was any stretch at all left. And that's elongation. Again, you can see there's really no difference in any of that. And then the final one was the number of wraps. So again, wrapping five, the, the, young, the unused and the 20 year wire made it to five wraps. And that's how many times you wrap it did fine. The, the older wire never made it that far. It, it was breaking anyway, whether it was burned or unburned on that. So again, showing that uh, fire had that effect on it ha or had no effect on old wire either. So again, new wire, old wire, you know, brand, you know, brand new wire, 15 year old wire, old rusty wire, no impact from fire of doing that. Next thing we looked at just a few years ago was looking at steel T-post. Uh, 
again, because again, that's one of the more big, really big common, especially in our part of the world, doing that. And I've heard a lot of things about all the fires going through. It's doing damage to T-posts as well. Uh, and doing that, again, still T-posts follow under the same ASTM standards. There are guidelines for T-posts. They all have a standard no matter who makes them. Uh, they follow it. Again, most of them, there's a nominal weight of 1.33 pounds per foot. You can also, there's another set of posts you can buy that are heavier duty that are, I think, they're 166 pounds per foot. But typically what most people buy is the 1.33 pound. Uh, they've got a, they also have to meet certain dimensions. I forget, I couldn't remember what they are, the width on them, so many inches, you know, and all that, and the T. Also, the steel that they use has to be at a Rockwell hardness of 83. So that tells you how hard the steel is. You know, they temper it down to whatever that is, an 83 hardness. And then they're supposed to be coated with a weather-resistant enamel paint. So that's how T-posts are made and, the, and what the standards of what they do on that. So what we did is we went back to our research area again where we had fire records and we know what's going on, we know how old the fences were and when the posts were put in and do everything that we can. Uh, just to kind of look at it, we had area of one pasture, T-post was put in in 2013, the fires occurred in 2017. We had a prescribed fire that went through and then we also had posts where we know that didn't burn, so we had burned versus unburned that we looked at. Another area we knew that Post for defense was built in 82. We had a prescribed fire and actually had two wildfires burn through that area, uh, 2010, 1991, and 2009. We also had an area where we knew there was no fire had went through the fence in that. And again, then we had 80, fence was built in 83, three fires. Fence was put in in 83, had a one big wildfire <laughs> through it with no fire. And then the whole area here where we had 12 known fires through that one fence. And we also had an area where there's no, no fire fence right on the property boundary. So we had a big record and a lot of fires. So again, if you think anything's gonna happen, you got something that's been burned through at least 12 times on a fence that's at that time was uh, about, what was it, 27 years old, somewhere right in there on that. So again, what you look at uh, is thinking about, well, the fire may weaken the metal, and then you're going to think about fires going to melt the paint, and which can cause rust, which would cause damage to the post over time. So we looked at, again, we also looked at varying heights to see if there was any difference between fire intensity on that. So we had 40 centimeter height, 80 centimeter height, and 120 centimeter heights on that. The dashed line up there is the industry standard for metal hardness at 83. Again, all the posts that we tested well above, or above the industry standard of 83, so they, they would fit that minimal. Doing that again, showing no damage within that. And again, the number of fires from zero, four, eight, or 12 fires that had went through there. Uh, the paint, the way you test the paint is you buy a high dollar roll of sticky masking tape that they sell. You scratch an X with a razor knife in the post. So you got to do an X with a straight edge. You place that tape firmly over that X, then you take a pencil eraser and smooth it all up, press it down, and then you pull the tape off. And then you look at that tape, and then they have a rating classification of how much paint peels off. And that tells you how good that paint is. A one is like, if I remember right, a one is like brand new paint. We, we had on every post, whether it was burned or not, paint starting to fade and come off a little bit. We never had any paint just really peel, big chips peel off of anything like that. Uh, on doing that, again, you can see 
you can draw a line across that. There, there's not a really, a, the standard would be a one, you know, because it's brand new paint. But there's no standard with age. If you see that, whether, whether it was burned or not, everything had the same pretty much paint adhesion left and paint quality left on it. So again, at no time and at any height through that. And so at any time, uh, there, you know, the fire does not Im even impact the paint that's on the, the T-post. On there, even, again, from up to 12 fires that have been burned through there on that. So again, what it's, what it's showing is, as for, again, standard 12 and a half gauge barbed wire, no impact on fire, from fire, I'm doing that. Uh, no impact on T-post. And again, one of the reasons some people say, well, why would you burn through your fences anyway? Again, where I burn through fences because I'm going to keep trees out of it. Because if you want to tear a fence up, let trees start growing in your fence. Uh, and that's where you'll see more damage than anything going down because they'll start stretching and breaking wires. It'll rub more, rub on the galvanized. It'll disappear away because it's getting rubbed on by the branches and doing that. So we burn through all of our fences because we want to keep cedars out and other woody plants knocked back and doing that. And so that's what the way we keep doing that. The other thing is, as for doing this, you know, doing that, I have also been called as an expert witness at numerous court cases throughout the U.S. on fences. And man, I walk in with this information and that, and most of the lawyers for the plaintiffs, they immediately drop their fence, fence, fence claims because they know they can't beat it. And we've yet to had anybody really challenge that on doing that because again, you get a lot of claims. Anytime a fire goes through, people get greedy and they start, wanting, especially on wildfires, man, they start saying, oh, my fence is ruined. Yeah, it's not ruined. Uh, actually, I even did one on a lawsuit uh, where I actually told the lawyer, said, here, I'll tell you what, here's what we're gonna do because we had a great map of where the fire actually went through and all that, so we had a GPS down. I said, we're gonna take samples from the burn versus the unburned fence and we'll, we'll, prove, we'll test it, you know, and if, if, it, if it did hurt the fence, it'll show up in the test, and yeah, we'll pay, you'll pay them for the fence, because that's the deal, pay them for the wire. And we did that, uh, sent the test off. It was an old, old fence that had no galvanized on it, so all we could do was do tensile strength and uh, ductility on it. Again, come back, there's no impact because of that fire at all on that. And so, doing that, so that's a, that's the thing that we've got. And so one thing, a lot of times when you tell people this, it's like telling them, hey, there's no Santa Claus, no Easter Bunny, you know, on that. Because it goes against what we think. You know, it's like, well, it's got to hurt it. It's, it's heat. And then the thing we've got to remember is fires, especially in grassland settings, are moving rapidly. And that heat there is not there for that long. And again, in these, these uh Fences and wire and stuff, they're set up to withstand that type of heat. They're already put through a, a 2,500 degree lead bath to do, to, to give, to temper it, you know, within that. And so that helps for it to handle. Uh, as for other parts of the fence, wood post, I've, you know, I haven't never, I've never looked at wood posts. There are no studies looking at it. I've looked, tried to find studies that are looking on it. There's no studies looking at effect of fire on wood post. Uh, there was a couple of old, old studies that looked at treating the posts to make them fire resistant that didn't work uh, on that. You know, the biggest factors about wood posts is soil moisture. Again, in drought situations, that's why we see a lot of fence posts burn up because why? It's dry and so it incorporates stuff to the fence posts. Fence posts are hygroscopic, which means they like wa they're, they're water absorbing. So when the soil moisture is wet, What's the fence post? It's wet too, because it's sucking moisture out of the water. That's why a lot of times when we're burning, there's no impact on a wood post. Uh, I can tell you this, in Osage County, Oklahoma, there's areas that burn every year, and there's still miles of wood post up there that they burn through every year, and they have been burning through for 50 years. You know, and they might lose a post every once in a while that finally rotted down. 
then that's the other biggest factor is age and condition of that post. That's why a lot of times you see a lot of corner posts catch on fire because a lot of times them corners are old. They got big gaps in them or rots. Some way, there's some way that embers can get trapped in there and do that uh, within that. I, the only other thing that I ever have, one of my colleagues, uh, actually Dave Engel, that we worked on the, the bob wire study together. Dave was working on a, on a wildfire case in the Texas Panhandle a few years back, and he, he told me he'd come upon an interesting deal that had happened. There was a fence up there and one stretch of fence that he was working on in a lawsuit and got to look at that the wire was fine, but it was broke because it had... Uh, wooden stays wired in between the post and everywhere not i don't think on every one of them and every wire but a lot of the wires where the wood stays was it did break the it did break the wire in there because of so much heat for a long time burning on those wood larger wood stays that did that so again that was a, a deal but that's something we don't see with normal prescribed fire use and anything around fences and stuff like that and you know and it was a, a a seen damage you could see that that was the cause of it a lot of times too like in wildfire situations that i've worked on and, and see they'll you know, people will say well look at that fence it, the wires all broke well the wires broke it's inside a cedar tree you know there's a bunch of cedars in the fence a bunch of trees and there's two or three wires broke yeah you haven't seen that fence in, in six years that that wire i guarantee it got broke four years ago it wasn't because of the fire it was because of the tree kind of deal and so those kind of things are what we look at. So again, you know, wood post, you know, I don't really have a lot of concern with wood posts. If you do, you know, you know, wet down like corner posts and things like that, if you're thinking about it, but most of the line posts and stuff, it's all about soil moisture, biggest part of it. So if you are burning when it's really dry, yeah, that'd be a thing to think about being concerned about it. Uh, if you got good adequate soil moisture when you're burning, everything seems damp. Probably not a whole lot, just need to patrol it. If something catches on fire, do it. The other thing I do see is a lot of times is people spraying some of that stuff down. And a lot of times they're always spraying on the side that the wind's coming from. So on the upwind side of it, they spray it down and they don't get on the inside. And I'll tell you this, most of the time the fence, any wood posts that are gonna burn up are gonna burn up on the downwind side of that because that's the hottest side. So when wind blows and hits, that's why everybody familiar with a cat face on a tree, a fire scar on a tree, those fire scars occurred on the opposite side of the tree that the wind, that the fire come from. Because that's where the most intense heat is. And you're like, how's that where the most intense heat is when the fire's coming from this direction and it hits right here and it's going here. But what happens is you take that post, the wind goes beside it, and when it goes around it, it eddies, it swirls. And when you swirl, you increase wind speed. When you increase wind speed, you increase what to a fire? Oxygen. Increase oxygen, you increase flammability and combustion. So it gets hotter and that's what the side is. So you need to be worried about the back side of your posts more than the front side, because that's where it's gonna happen, is on the back side. And you can always tell which direction the fire come from from that. That way, you're going to, that's where you're gonna see more char at is on that downwind side, the leeward side. So, on that. I guess with that, you got time for a quick question or anything? Yeah. I came a little bit late, so maybe you covered this, but have you looked at any effects of fire on high tension fences and fiberglass posts? Uh, fiberglass loves fire, it'll just burn right up. Uh, yeah, it's not good. Uh, we didn't look at high tensile, but I used the, when I, I ran the research station for years, we had a lot of high tensile, a bunch of the old Gallagher high tensile wire uh, electric fence out there. We had about seven miles of that stuff roaming around, and we burned through it a lot. Never had any kind of impact on it. Again, it's galvanized. I don't know what the standards are. It's not an ASTM because it was all made in Australia. But again, there's a standard, and I would imagine, as with most of the galvanized stuff and the fire effects, it was not any kind of impact at all. But the fiberglass posts, yeah, it's, they're not going to survive. On that. Any? Just on the high tensile, on, you know, we burned through a lot of electric fences, and I just, just as common, it's, it's even pretty rare to really melt them instantly. 
I mean, it happens like through wetlands and stuff where there's more heat retention. Yeah. But just like on what you're saying, on a normal grassland burning, if it's two, three foot high grass, when the fire just rolls under it, it it's pretty rare to really wreck them. Yeah. So if it's not wrecking the plastic, I don't know when it's really going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah, I've had some where we've melted quite a few, but others where we haven't, you know, just trying to, a lot of times people, electric fence kind of avoid that. But, you know, the other thing is, is mow, reduce the fuel load along the edges of it, get the, get the fuel on either side of it down so the fire hits that, becomes lower intensity going through it, and then comes back up, you save that plastic. Either that or just keep a pocket full of them with you and go replace them. Just like Pete said, you know, they're seeing very little impact on that, so. All right. Anything else? All right. Thank you all.